When looking at Six Flags today, it's hard to imagine if there was a time when they didn't copy rides, names or themes. However, there is no need to imagine something that didn't happen, as today we're going to look back at Six Flags' troubled history. In 1959, like many others, Angus Wine saw a success of Disneyland and thought about creating his very own amusement park. Many other companies have failed to capitalise the success of Disney, but Angus Wine had something that no one else had, the idea of copying. Therefore, when his $3 million park opened six flags over Texas, there were a few similarities. 1. Sally's River Adventure 2. The Happy Motoring Freeway 3. The Astro Lift 4. Skull Island 5. Six Flags Railroad and 6. Indian Village and that kid is how 6 stolen ideas formed the parks that we all know and love, Six Flags. This Six Flags park was a roaring success and within the first season which only opened for 45 days there had over 500,000 confused guests thinking that they were at Disneyland. But after adding a few more clones from such companies as Arrow, Six Flags decided to expand out and create Six Flags over Georgia which opened on the 16th of June 1967. This park was very different though, as not only did it have the country's first gold rush mine, but also the hardest name to pronounce, Yahula Hula, which for some reason was later called the Mini Mine Train. In addition to this, there was another riverboat called the Jean Riboat's Riverboat Adventure. Who came up with these names? Names aside though, don't think because Six Flags has two parks made within eight years that they were done, as four years later in 1971, Six Flags over Mid-America, the chain's third theme park, which is later named Six Flags St. Louis opened. And you guessed it, it had another riverboat called Mississippi Adventure in addition to a coaster. In this year as well, something amazing happened. Disney World opened, which means that Six Flags had a whole new park of ideas to copy. Despite no one going to Disney World because they thought Six Flags was going to knock it off, a few years later, Six Flags changed their direction away from family rights and towards the thrill market. Therefore, instead of building another theme park, they decided to improve their parks and add in a new wooden coaster at 120 foot high. Oh wait, no, Six Flags advertised it as 120 foot, but actually it was 110. What's the difference? But despite the height, it was a roaring success over at Six Flags over Georgia, so they teamed up with Intamin in 1977 and introduced the world to Wheelie, Highland Fling, as well as Spin Maker, the revved up version of a carousel. And at this point, the public can see a clear divide between parks like Disney and parks like Six Flags, but when Six Flags is all going well, they go ahead and buy Great Adventure and Wild Safari Park, which at the time was struggling. But with Six Flags, zero animal knowledge, what could go wrong? Well, at this point of time, no one knows, but what we do know is that only two years later, alongside with the unfortunate death of Angus Wine, they invest in another struggling park called Magic Mountain, home to a wooden coaster called Colossus. Then surprisingly, from 1977 to 1984, not much happened apart from adding a few more rides to their parks, but oh my god was 1984 a big year for Six Flags. With the purchase of Marriott's Great America, which later left the theme park industry and Atlantis' water park, in addition to this, they also began the agreement with Looney Tunes we can still see around the park today, as well as adding an Intamin Super Air Race ride over at Texas and over Georgia. After that, Six Flags knew they had a problem, but kept adding rides like Z Force for Space Dive and Ninja, which was their first for Cobra development. Eventually, though, the year after their Texas Giant Coaster, Six Flags closed due to financial ruins. At this point, no one knew whether Six Flags would recover, but later that same year, Time Warner, which is now known as Warner Brothers, bought half of Six Flags and built the world's first inverted roller coaster Batman for ride, followed by them buying the second half of the company. Knowing Six Flags' luck at the time, nothing goes well as Time Warner got into financial trouble too and sold Six Flags again in 1995, four years later than when it was first sold. It was sold to Boston Ventures who soon after the purchase brought Wet n Wild and made Hurricane Harbour. So now Six Flags does have theme parks but zoos and water parks as well. But this was nothing compared to the investment of Fiesta Texas in 1996 or more importantly the opening of Superman the Escape, the world's first 400 foot and 100 miles per hour coaster and the beginning of Magic Mountain's capital of roller coasters. One year later though, in 1998, Six Flags was bought again by a new company called Premier Parks. This had no relation to Premier Rides for you theme park enthusiasts out there. This company operated for years in debt, but still added rides like Dr. Freeze and the world's largest stand-up coaster located at Magic Mountain, Riddler's Revenge. Welcome to Six Flags. We have now made it to the 21st century and a fun fact for you guys that the Boss, which was a giant custom coaster international wooden coaster, 
which opened at Six Flags St. Louis, had a ride endurance world record and someone rode it for a hundred consecutive days. That's a lot for even me. But what isn't a lot for me is the addition of X in 2002 over at Six Flags Magic Mountain. But despite it being such a great ride, it was also very expensive to run, which led to the closure of it every single Wednesday. However, this was the least Six Flags problem as they were back into financial difficulties, which led them to selling Six Flags World of Adventure in 2004. But typical Six Flags builds a new 456 foot coaster called Kinder Car in 2005 despite the difficulties. But it did pay off as to this very day it is still known as the world's tallest roller coaster and people travel around the world to go on it. And for our final year for Six Flags 45th birthday they added Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia and Superman Tower of Power at Six Flags St. Louis. Now I know there are more years after that and I will cover that in another video but I am warning you if you want to see that comment down below how there is the green lantern in that bracket and we know how traumatizing that is but it is now time to end this video on six flags history if you want to see more videos make sure to subscribe like and comment down below as my name is tom derrick from theme park coasting and we're really hoping to hit 2.5 thousand subscribers by the end of the year but on that note i'll see you guys later goodbye